right, we have come to the close, okay, which I believe has been quite fruitful and interesting. So I will not take much time. Quickly, just point out a few points as a takeaway point for today's sessions. Onomika, in her presentation, mentioned that fake news is not new. It is old. It is actually a very old concept. So what has changed? What has changed in dramatically? is the speed at which fake news can be circulated and the reach that fake news can have. So that is the fundamental change. So to understand that, I would like you to understand how the news cycles have changed. Previously, even in your generation, you have seen 24-hour news cycles. We've seen 12-hour news cycles, 6-hour news cycle. Now, it is not even 1-hour news cycle. It is every minute news cycle. So news is as old as one minute. So news has become extremely dynamic and it can be circulated at the speed of light. So that is a fundamental change. The other thing is that the mainstream media is dying. The mainstream print media is dying, the mainstream electronic media is dying. And the alternate videos are taking its place. So there is a, there's a sea change in the number and the quality of players in the media space. The other thing you should please remember that the media space is, or the information space is unique. Just like a person can never live without ox oxygen, an information space can never leave without information. So you have always got to populate the space with information and news. If you don't populate the information space with the right information, then disinformation and fake news will take its place. So it is a battle between the right information and disinformation. And there, the right information is losing the battle. The other, other thing that you should remember is that the information is no longer general in nature. You are being targeted with information. So I'm sure you have all heard about things called micro-targeting. So that's how information is micro-targeting you. The, the old story about Cambridge Analytica, how it played the elections in the United States in 2016 is an example. We should also remember that information does not come alone. Information today is clustered. So one disinformation reinforces another disinformation and creates a disinformation ecosystem. So in that ecosystem, if you enter that information disorder ecosystem, then you have happen to populate in that information system. And that clustering is something that we have to understand. We have to also understand that it is a Facebook world. Over 3 billion people today live in the Facebook. If Facebook was a state, it would become the largest state in the world. And those are the realities of life that we need to, need to take home and we need to understand that. Bushra brought, a, brought out a very good point that what should you do? How should we educate people? It is, I think, uh, pertinent for me to say that especially for rural population or for younger population, it is a responsibility of the state to bring out do's and don'ts and educate people, tell them what to do. We should also teach people on fact-checking. Fact-checking is very easy and very possible. We have to tell people how to do it. But what is also more of concern is that new technologies are coming up every day and they have ability to influence us even more. AI, algorithms, especially augmented reality, can completely transform you into another world. And unless you're very, very careful, you enter that world and you live in that world. 
we have heard about influences from Anamika. So, the people who you trust can become your worst enemies for disinformation. Your friends, your peers. And those are the people you have to be very careful, not always blindly trusting. We have to understand that information besides being disinformation, can also be manipulated to make you believe that. So understand the cycles of information manipulation. I would also like to say that the mainstream media has also got a responsibility in pushing out the truth, to fight the untruth or fight the disinformation. So. The mainstream media has a responsibility of creating the right narratives in which sometimes they are shying away from the responsibility. We have heard about the news propulsion cycles, so the role of bots and such like technology is becoming very, very prevalent. Please understand that like goods, news also has a shelf life. What is news today can only leave for three days or four days and it becomes stale and old. So the news cycles are very, very life cycles. So that is a period of vulnerability of disinformation. And even more lethal, when that information or disinformation is weaponized, then it can become extremely harmful. By creating myths with news, we can take you to information islands where you become inhabitants and you don't skip that island anymore. Should be, you should be very careful about hate speech because hate speech can also have devastating consequences. And we should also be aware of the damage cycle of hate speech and disinformation. Because if you need to intervene, you have to have a very short window to, inter to intervene there. Beyond that, it could be a permanent damage or a fatal damage. So it is important for us to understand what is the damage cycle of disinformation so that we can do any corrections within that span of time. Shafnath mentioned to you about influence operation. Today, it has gone beyond influence operation to information war. We are at a stage when information is not only information, but information is power, information is a weapon. So that is the difficult world we live in, and it will become even more challenging in the future. So it is important for all of you, who are the people, are the leaders of tomorrow, to understand the challenges of tomorrow's world so that we can correct the mistakes that are possible and make information useful and conducive to the betterment of people everywhere in the world. I thank you all very much for being with us for the whole day. It has been extremely educative for us to understand your and get your perspectives and knowledge, the experience, and we will continue to have such workshops in future on all other topics of interest. Please visit our website, visit our social media platforms. We will be creating an alumni network and we'll be in touch with you in future. So I wish you all a very good day. Thank you very much. Thank you.